So speaking about functional programming, let's start with the absolute basics. You're speaking to a, a junior developer. How would you explain to them functional programming? Uh, they haven't never tried it before. What is it? So it's different things to different people, but one of the things I like to think of is when we're building an app, it's best if we organize our, our behavior, our state in different ways. And one way to do that is the encapsulation we learned in objects. And another way is with functions. And with functions, we think about things like immutability so that uh, things don't change out from under us when we're not expecting it. And we think about functions the way mathematicians think of functions. And that is, if you give me a function and you give me the same input, you better get the same output every time. And that's not what we do in OO. You know, we call random and we get a random number. We call random again, we get a different number. And we're perfectly fine with that. And so in functional programming, we want that uh, repeatability. We want dependability. And we want to know when things are mutating and be able to train it a little bit. Now, I am not an expert in functional programming. I am learning it. I'm learning it to the point that I feel comfortable explaining it to people, but I'm only a several years in. And so there are people that know it. You know, In the old days, when we did something in, in uh, Objective-C or Java, people would say, oh, we did that in Smalltalk 20 years ago. And now we hear the same thing. You know, We say something clever in functional programming, and the Haskell people say, oh, we did that 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. So when Daniel says he's learning functional programming, what he means is that, what, 18 months ago, I met Daniel at NS Spain, and I was saying, Dan, you've been doing some, so many great functional talks, doing such great work. When are you going to write this functional programming book? And it just so happens, Daniel, what do you have to say about a functional programming book? <laughs> so I have just baited the first chapter of the book. Um, this first chapter is really special. I, I've been... Um, putting this through tech review and I had this throwaway page where I made this reference to magic and James Dempsey gave me some feedback. He said, I want more here and it grew into an entire chapter. And so the first chapter is sort of using a magic metaphor and a magician doing a trick. And we learn how to do a trick using a mutating deck of cards and then a non mutating deck of cards. And, uh, so to continue what you're asking about functions, uh, so I'll finally get to the question you asked me, uh, <laughs> The second chapter, I talk about functions aren't special because that's one of the things you have to get your head around in functional programming is, you know, functions are first class objects. So the same way you can pass me a string, you can pass me a function. And the same way I can store a string in a property, you can store a function in a property. And then in chapter three, we take a look at, well, if functions can accept strings, they can also accept other functions. And this gets you ready for things that are in the Swift standard library, like map and sort and filter and all those. Mm. And then the end of the book, uh, I might as well tell you about all of it. Uh, <laughs> spoiler alert. The end of the book says, you know, we have map for arrays. We have map for optionals. You can write your own map for your own types. You can write your own flat map. And it's a why and when you want to do that. And so it's, it's my usual kickstart style. There are more comprehensive introductions to functional programming. But my idea is you're a smart programmer. You know many things. You just don't know this thing. And so that's what my books tend to do is you don't know this thing. Let me tell you how I think about it. Fair enough.